Hey guys, welcome back to Bullfrog Pawn Shop. Today we're going to flatten this tree cookie. But first, a little backstory. Last weekend, my dad and I flattened this black walnut cookie. It was my first go around flattening with the router sled, and I'm very happy with the results. It just needs to be sanded and finished. Let's take a look at my router and sled. I bought this router used for $80. Looks like it was used pretty hard, but uh, it still runs well, and I didn't have any issues last week. It's variable speed and electronic speed control. The variable speed is critical because these large flattening bits cannot be run at the speeds typically seen with single speed routers. The particular bit I have is recommended to run at 16,000 RPMs max. And most single speed routers are much faster than that. So do not try to run these large bits on a single speed router. The router bit is the white side 6220. This bit is marketed as a CNC spoil board leveling bit, but it also works great for flattening slabs. It's two inch diameter and half inch shank. This bit was not cheap, I have to tell you, almost $100. But white side bits are excellent and the carbide tips look to be thick enough to be resharpened many times. The router sled was built from the two piece main rail from my old garage door opener. And good thing too is the bit only extends below the router base about half an inch at full plunge depth. Which gives me a max cut of about 3 8 inch. I have to say I have no idea how all these other guys that I see on YouTube are able to use 3 quarter inch plywood as the base of their sled and still get the router bit to extend below the sled. If I'm doing something wrong or if I'm missing something, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to know how those guys are making that happen. I was planning on building side rails for the sled when I realized my chop saw station might work for that purpose. And as you can see, my sled happens to fit perfectly. Hashtag winning. Okay, let's prep the cookie. First, I'll hot glue some shims to the bottom of the cookie. And you'll see a little bit later why I'm not gluing them to the table. Now I'll trim off the excess shims. By the way, when you first put your cookie on the sled, don't worry if your sled, if your cookie is too thick that your sled rides up on the cookie a little bit. Uh, simply take your first cut, and then come back and without adjusting your depth on your router, go back over again. Your, uh, your sled will eventually level out to the point where it rides right on your side rails. Before we start cutting, a word of caution. This process makes a mess. You will have piles of sawdust all over the place. You'll have to sweep or vacuum it out every other cut or maybe even every cut. When I mean cut, I mean the entire layer. Further, there will be dust, fine dust, covering everything in your shop as a result of doing this. Unless you have some boss air filtration system, it's going to be everywhere. So if there's anything you don't want covered in dust, cover it up with a tarp or something. Secondly, you already know to protect your eyes and your ears, but you have got to protect your lungs when you do this. The amount of dust in the air when you're doing this is going to be off the charts, so please Protect your lungs as well as your eyes and ears. Let's start cutting. So I have my router bit extending below the rails of the sled about 1 16th of an inch. And it looks like this is the highest point of the cookie. So it's probably only going to cut back in this area to start with.
Once I've extended my router to the, its maximum depth of cut, I place a piece of thin plywood. This is about 10 millimeters, about 3 eighths of an inch. That will lift up my cookie and allow my router bit to reach it. This is why I did not, or this is why I glued the shims only to the bottom of the cookie so I could keep raising this up as I go. This is the top side, totally flat. You can see there's some lines from the router bit, uh, but you can't feel those at all. So uh, I'm pretty sure those are gonna sand out pretty easily, hopefully. Um, by the way, I did neglect to mention this. You saw this crack. I think I'm gonna try filling that with some epoxy and a couple bow ties, maybe out of some contrasting wood, like some black walnut or something. Uh, I've never done that before, but I think I'm going to try that too. By the way, this particular tree, I planted in like 5th or 6th grade. The whole class put a little maple seed in a paper cup on the windowsill and planted it. And of course, at the end of the school year, I guess I took it home and it somehow found its way into my backyard and was planted there and, and grew up however many years and uh, was eventually needed to be cut down. And so I asked the guys that were cutting it at the time to cut me a cookie. And this was it. This, along with the black walnut cookie that I showed you earlier, which was that black walnut was also cut from my childhood home yard, the backyard. Um, they sat in my parents' shed for, I don't know, 15 or 20 years. Gets crazy hot in there in the summer and of course cold as ice in the winter and so I'm pretty sure these things have done all the warping and cracking they're going to do so hopefully they're pretty stable and they're not going to be moving too much after all this wood's been removed anyway um, after you get the, the top flat you flip this over and remove the shims and flatten the other side Oddly enough, the bark on these things, both of these, the bark on both of these cookies is still intact. Okay, here we go, flattening the other side.
And there you have it, a beautiful flat cookie. Check this out, it is perfectly flat in both directions. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll leave you with an image of the pile of sawdust that resulted from all this. Remember when I said this would make a mess? Yeah, it's a mess. Thanks for tuning in.